Hi everyone, this video is all about our Sheriff DMC 4th Access Unit, which mounts to the DMC2 Mini and larger DMC2. I'll go over some specs and details and a cutting example in this video, and all the more intricate setup details will be provided in the manuals that ship with the 4th Axis. So to begin with, our 4th Axis is an 80mm 4-jaw self-centering chuck. The unit is closed loop and belt driven, which is protected under a metal enclosure, and we've added a homing sensor for accurate positioning if needed. With the axis opened up, the jaws can hold parts about 1.75 inches in diameter, but it does come with two sets of jaws, so you can swap them out easily and then you get a maximum of just under 3 inches in capacity. If you are mounting the entire unit to the DMC2 Mini, you can get about 6 inches of machinable length from the face of the truck to the end of the machine travel. To demo the fourth axis, I've put together a sample part in a 1 inch diameter piece of round aluminum stock. This part contains some wrapped adaptive tool paths and wrapped text that cuts into the surface of the material evenly. It has an organic egg-shaped cut along the axis of the material to display a lathe-like 3D cutting operation. And it has a flat surface at the top with text engraved into the flat. The text and flat operations use a 2mm flat end mill grouped into one setup. The organic shape uses a 4mm ball end mill. And the engraving along with chamfering the edges is grouped into a chamfer tool setup. All three setups have the exact same work coordinate position, which is always going to be along the center line of the fourth axis at the left side of your part. I do want to point out that the free personal use version of Fusion has a few basic wrapped toolpath options available, but most of the multi-axis toolpaths are locked behind the manufacturing extension. So you'll need to either purchase a subscription to Fusion for Axis or use the startup version or the free 30-day trial for educational licenses. Anyways, I've taken my first setup for the 2mm end mill operations and posted it. And it's important to note that this time I am using a 4th axis enabled post processor, which is the same as the standard 3 axis Mach 3 post processor, but with some settings adjusted to enable and configure the 4th axis. Make sure you select 4th axis mounted along X the first time you post. Over on the machine, I've already homed all the axes and I'm now mounting my stock material. If you recall from the cam setup, the work coordinate position is along the center line of the fourth axis and at the far left edge of the part. Probing this with the DMC2 Mini X and Y probes is going to be challenging because of the part's round surface. So instead, I'm going to just manually find the center. To do this, I've loaded my first 2mm end mill into the collet and I'm going to jog the machine carefully right up to the top of the stock and just barely squeeze a piece of paper between the end mill and the top surface. Once the paper gets caught, I know I'm about 0.08 millimeters off the top of the part and about 0.08 millimeters plus the radius of the material away from the center line. I can click the Z work coordinate position in Mach 3 and type that number in on screen. To locate the Y axis work coordinate, I'll do something similar, this time very carefully jogging behind the stock until I squeeze my piece of paper. My tool is now a distance of one stock material radius plus one end mill radius, plus the thickness of the paper behind the Y0 position. I could have done this from the front of the material, but I did it from behind to get a better camera angle, and that means I'm inputting a negative number in the Y coordinate. Lastly for X, this is a little easier. I just jog my end mill to touch the 4mm shank section to the material, and that makes my tool center line just 2mm left of the stock, so I can input negative 2 in the X work coordinate. With that, all three work coordinates are manually set and I'll leave the A-axis coordinate as zero, so that tells the software that this exact position right now is the start position for the fourth axis. Also, as a note, absolutely do not click go to zero when using the fourth axis, because that would smash the tool into the stock, trying to get the center of the tool physically into the part where zero, zero, zero is located. Now I'm ready to click start and let the first operation begin. So you can hear a little bit of chatter in this cut, and the reason for that is because we're machining on such a long, narrow, cantilevered piece of material, so the workpiece itself is able to deflect just a little bit. As we machine closer to the chuck, the sound disappears. A rule of thumb is that you want to avoid cutting material that is more than four times in length than its diameter, but of course you can't always avoid that, so you need to just cut extra lightly in those situations.
Okay, so that is complete and looks great. Next, I'm going to do the chamfer operations. So I'll remove the end mill and install my chamfer mill. Since the chamfer setup was made with the same work coordinate position as before, I don't have to reprobe anything because I've kept the machine on without doing any e-stops. I do, however, just need to reprobe the Z height. So I'll do the same thing as before with a piece of paper. We can see here that the chamfer didn't go deep enough in the sheriff text, which is a sign that I likely didn't probe the z-axis quite accurately enough with paper. No problem though, I'll just copy and paste the setup, delete everything but the text, and then repost just this setup and rerun it since I have not changed any work coordinates. The final thing now is the 4mm ball end mill to do the organic egg shape. I've set up the tool as usual with paper and I'll post the g-code to run. There is something weird about this operation though that I was not able to figure out. I used a geodesic toolpath to basically do an endless spiral around the part like a lathe, but for some reason Fusion split this into two spirals approaching from opposite ends. It's fine for this test to show off our fourth axis, but I don't know why it does this or how to turn it off, but it does leave a weird transition line in the middle where it meets. Anyways, let's have a look at how it runs.
So here is our finished part. It turned out great minus the weird geodesic toolpath artifact, which is still very smooth to the touch, but it has a bit of a bump and it's not what you visually want on a finished part. The test and pockets all turned out great, but there is one flaw I found. The chamfer on the DMC text goes off the pockets and into the round material, and this is actually just a simple amateur mistake. If we look at the cam simulation, we can see that obviously a round tool is not going to get into the square edges of the text pockets. However, the chamfer tool will follow these sharper corners exactly, so it will chamfer into areas that the end mill wasn't able to reach. A better solution would be to use a different text font that has more rounded edges as well as a smaller diameter end mill. Anyways, that's a quick introduction and demo of our Sheriff DMC 4th Axis unit. They are now in stock and ready to ship and you can find them at www.sheriffdmc.com. Thanks for watching this video.